In this video, Entitled Aunt Nearly Ruins Free Vacation, Boyfriend Disturbs Ambulance, and EM Feels Entitled to My Handicapped Parking Spot Just Because She Let Some Dude Cream Pie Her. Entitled Aunt Nearly Ruins Free Vacation This story happens before the pandemic. I love Ireland. My grandmother told me stories and inspired a pride and love for my heritage and taught how to properly represent myself. I am not Irish, but my ancestors were. Years ago, I started studying the Irish language. I'm still very novice at speaking and understanding it, but I enjoy trying to learn and like hearing it spoken. I was starting to think about another trip when one of my cousins contacts me. We never had much contact because we grew up so far apart, but I liked him well enough. He had started learning the Irish language and I was interested in having someone to practice with, so we did. We helped each other and learned together. It's a difficult language and like I said, still very novice. Well, I was planning a trip to Ireland. i had been a few times, but this time I wanted to stay in the Galtacht, the regions of Ireland where Gaelic is primarily spoken instead of English. The people there speak English, but as a second language. I thought my cousin would enjoy a trip as well. I spoke with my uncle and we made a deal. Since cousin was in his first year of college, I told him if he finished his freshman year with at least a 3.5 GPA, I would pay for him to go with me. He worked really hard and was taking mostly honors classes and came out with a 3.4. I of course let him feel a little grief from trying so hard only to come up short, then told him he was still going with me. You could say I shouldn't have, but he genuinely worked very hard and I believed he earned it. Plus, he was a good kid and I wanted to encourage him to keep working hard in his education. Now for a little quick background, my cousin's parents, Aunt C and Uncle T, are people of limited means. Not speaking poorly of them, Uncle T works hard to give them a comfortable life. Aunt C is my dad's sister and the grandmother I mentioned earlier is her mom. Uncle T is the son of Italian immigrants. While trying to put Cousin B through school, they couldn't afford to send him on vacation. But I assured them the whole trip was on me. I actually was splurging a bit because I wanted it to be an awesome experience for Cousin B. I got business class seats for the flight and booked two rooms, a really nice bed and breakfast. I was excited but Cousin was so pumped. He was shaking. Then Uncle T calls me. He asked if there was any chance I could include him and Aunt C on the trip. He understood it was a huge thing to ask and stressed that it was no pressure. I thought about it a bit and decided I would bring them along. My grandmother would have praised the generosity. I told him that since it was so close to the trip, I could only get them economy seats and he said it was fine. I also managed to book another room at the B&B. I also stressed that the purpose of this trip was for Cousin B and I to interact with native Gaelic speakers, but there would be time for some sightseeing. We could also visit the town our ancestors came from in County Mayo. This is where I learned what a Karen my Aunt C is. It started at the airport. I had managed to upgrade their tickets to Economy Plus, which on an international flight is not too bad. But my aunt was saying that cousin and I should sit there while the grown-ups get the nice seats. I was 30 at the time. My cousin was 19. My uncle looked embarrassed. She told cousin B to give her his ticket and he almost did. I had to nip this in the bud. I paid for all these seats so I will determine who sits where. Those are still nice seats. Enjoy your flight. Aunt C. Oh, so since you paid for everything, you think you're in charge? Me. Yes, and if you don't like it, you can go home. She huffed but stayed silent. Uncle T gave me a wink and Cousin B apologized for his mom's behavior. At one point, he quietly said to himself, she always does this. We arrive in Ireland and took a cab to our B&B. &B. The first two days were great. Cousin B and I went out and tried to awkwardly converse with the locals who were as gracious as you could wish for and helped us a lot. We mostly did stuff separately from aunt and uncle, which was fine, but I noticed aunt was getting a little edgy and on our fourth morning at breakfast, she snapped. One of the girls working at the B&B &B brought them their breakfast and apparently greeted them in Gaelic, like she did every morning. This was the point where everyone there began to hear, does anyone in this fucking place speak English? Jesus Christ, it's like being in a foreign country. My grandmother lived her whole life here. She could speak English. Why can't you? Before I could appreciate that my aunt had actually said it's like being in a foreign country, I was out the door and running across the yard. I apologized to the poor girl and gave her a 50 note then went to talk to my aunt. Do you not understand what I told you about this part of Ireland? I thought I explained that Irish Gaelic is the primary language spoken here. Most people will start interactions in Irish and it's a big part of the B&B's business too. She just sat in her room looking huffy and Uncle T told me he'd handle it. 
He had fallen in love with Ireland and had been thoroughly enjoying the trip, so I let him deal with it. Then went to talk to the landlady to ensure we wouldn't be thrown out. She didn't tolerate mistreatment of her staff, but said if it happened again, they would have to leave. That day, I had rented a car and would be driving out to where my ancestors originally lived near Castlebar. I invited aunt and uncle, but aunt just stayed in the room, so the three of us went without her. It was an emotional thing visiting the little village, and I can't describe it, but cousin and I both felt like we could feel the spirits of our ancestors there. I know it's corny, but it was powerful. We found the graves of some of them as well. Uncle was mostly silent and respectfully let us experience it. Later, he told us about his parents leaving Italy. Rest of the trip was pretty quiet, but Aunt C never left the room or spoke to anyone there. Although she did charge a pretty expensive lunch to the room, my card, through a local high-class restaurant, Uncle T offered to pay me back for it, but I refused. We flew back and the whole flight cousin was going on and on about how amazing it was. It was clear that he had found a new love for international travel, so I told him if he keeps his grades up, maybe we could go the next summer. It became a regular trip for us, but never again brought the parents, except for his final year. I wasn't going to have time off to go, but thought I would mix it up. For a graduation gift, I sent him and Uncle T to Italy to see where that part of his family was from. I intentionally left out Aunt C. If she was upset about it, it never got back to me, though I heard she was deeply insulted. If anyone is wondering if I had other cousins, aunts, or uncles who were jealous, the answer is yes. My dad has six siblings, and all of them have children in a wide spectrum of ages. When asked why I never brought any of them, I said it was because Cousin B was the only one to show any serious interest in our heritage and the language. While granted, most of our trips involved failing to converse with people then saying, oh well, and heading to the pub, it was still a fun challenge for us. However, if any other cousins wanted to show a serious interest in the language, they would be welcome. None did. Boyfriend Disturbs Ambulance this happened in August 2020. I still can't believe myself what kind of people are living on this planet. The roles are PB, patient's boyfriend, P, patient, MP, my partner, me, me. First off, I work as a paramedic in a small town in northern Germany, 30 km away from the next big city. Sometimes we need to bring patients to the big city. It was a hot and busy day. We were rolling the first six hours through the whole city, but mostly small things that just needed transport. After the first real emergency, a car crash that needed transport in the mentioned bigger city, we were putting our stuff back together at the hospital. Not even one minute after setting us on the status, free for calls, the dispatch had something for us. Woman, around 20 years old, feeling unwell, no more information. That means it's possibly everything, from toe pain to cardiac arrest. After a 10 minute drive with lights and music, we arrived and rang at the door. PB opened the door, holding up his phone and saying, Hey guys, the ambulance came very quick, even with sirens on. Me and MP looking at each other with the what the F look? Me, good day. We were called to P, are we right here? PB, still filming. Yeah, come on in guys, that's gonna be great. Me thinking, what in the F is wrong here? After we went in the living room, there was a female, around 25 years old, lying on the couch, really thin. You could see some of her bones and unresponsive. While MP was checking the blood pressure, pulse, etc., and I was getting the monitor EKG ready, I asked PB what the matter is. PB, still filming us. She was filming her sport tutorial for her Instagram followers and suddenly fainted. She's on a new diet. She just looks too fat. Me, looking at the patient, she was really thin. Has she ate anything or drank anything today? And could you please put the phone down? PB, just a little bowl of cereal and a glass of orange juice. No, I don't need to. This blue light stories are epic on Instagram. We got interrupted by the monitor that made an alarm sound. The blood pressure was really low and the rest didn't look good either. MP, we need a doctor here. In Germany, we can call doctors to the scene if we need to give special medications or need to make invasive treatments. Me, after calling the doctor, Mr. PB, stop filming. Your girlfriend is in critical condition. PB, nah, man. This is gonna be huge. She'll love it and put it on her YouTube. MP, sarcastic. Yeah, the how I nearly died vlog. Absolutely great idea. Me, looking with the better shut up look over to MP. While discussing the phone problem with PB, I was making P's arm ready to put a needle in it. While I was unpacking the needle and having it ready, he came up so close that he hit me and I nearly stabbed myself. That was the boiling point. I was now really pissed. Me, 
calm but a little bit louder and clearer. If you don't back off and put the phone down, I'll get the police here and they will have to take care of it. You don't understand, do you? Your girlfriend lies here with a bad blood pressure, oxygen, and pulse. I'm really worried that we are close to a CPR. Even our doctor is on the way. So back off and put the phone down or the police will have to take care of it. PB said something like, sorry, I can't. This is my work. Me and MP looking at each other with this, is he fucking kidding us look? Me, all right, I'm calling the police. Five minutes after that, the doctor arrived. He was annoyed too by PB and told him to go away, but he still didn't listen. Few more minutes later, the cops came and made him delete all the footage. They stood with him outside until we went to the hospital. We drove as fast as possible to the hospital and managed to get P alive in the ICU. A few weeks later, MP heard from his girlfriend, a nurse that works there, that she made it and is now in good hands and hopefully dumped PB. I'm thanking God for my station in a small town. A lot less idiots to worry about. I just can't believe how dumb our species can be. So much for a modern world. EM feels entitled to my handicapped parking spot just because she let some dude cream pie her. Why do women with kids feel so entitled just because they have kids? I, female, 30-year-old, have an autoimmune arthritis condition. I walk with a cane. On my bad days, I can barely walk at all. I have a handicapped pluck card for those days. I had to go grocery shopping a while ago and I was in no condition to be walking long ways. Not a cold, red pain day, but definitely up there. If I hadn't been completely out of a few major necessities, I wouldn't have been out at all. When I got there, all the handicapped spots were full, but I saw an older gentleman loading his trunk and knew that spot would soon be available, so I pulled up and put my blinkers and waited. Soon as he was gone, I pulled into the spot, threw up my blue placard, and began hauling myself out of the car. I was just about ready to close the door when I hear, Excuse me! I look over and see a teal SUV pulled up behind me. There's this woman in the driver's seat yelling out the open passenger window at me. E.M. You just took my spot. Me. What? I was waiting behind the other guy. I didn't see you. EM. No, these are handicapped spots. They're only for handicapped people. I'm literally leaning against my car, cane in hand. I hold up the cane. I am handicapped, ma'am. I have a permit. EM scoffs and pulled away. I decide to just forget about her and begin my hobble walk into the store. I got even more frustrated when I saw there were no electric carts available, so I was forced to grab one of the smaller trolleys and walk. Since I have a hard time pushing a cart one-handed and the cart offers some support, I put my cane inside the cart. I was only as far as the produce section when I hear a familiar voice. Hey, you! It's the EM. She's pushing one of those big carts that look like cars for the kids. She had an infant and a toddler strapped into the front of the cart. Another kid, two years old maybe, standing bouncing in the cart. And yet another child holding her hand walking beside her. He looked five-ish. I'm bad at telling ages. She's also very pregnant. She walks up to me with this pissed off expression. You! You need to learn to be more respectful. I was waiting for that parking spot and you stole it. She's talking slash yelling over her kids who are all fussing loudly. Me. Lady, I didn't see you waiting for that spot. If you were, I apologize. EM. I was waiting for it. I needed a spot close to the entrance. Because of you, I had to park all the way towards the back. Me. Well, I said I was sorry. I look over her and her brood real quick. Besides, that was a handicapped spot. You can only park there with a permit. Are one of your kids handicapped? EM. No! The spot was for me. I'm pregnant. Me. Um, lady, you can't use disabled parking just because you're pregnant. Not unless you have some complications that affect your mobility. EM. No! You can use them if you're pregnant too. I always use them. Me. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work, ma'am. You're lucky you haven't gotten a ticket for not having a permit displayed. E.M. Huffs. Well, you shouldn't be using it. You're not pregnant and you clearly don't have kids. Me. No, I'm not pregnant, but I am disabled. This whole conversation, I've been leaning on my cart for support. I pull my cane out for her to see. I can barely walk 10 feet without pain. That's why I have a handicap permit. E.M. That's no excuse. You can't be in that much pain. I've been up all night with a colicky baby and couldn't keep anything down because of morning sickness. I'm exhausted. My feet are killing me. You don't know what it's like wrangling four kids while pregnant. I clearly needed that spot more than you did. I'm more than done with this whole argument at this point. Look, lady, I'm in pain. 
I'm tired and I want to just finish my shopping so I can go home and try to work up the will to make dinner tonight. I didn't see you waiting for the damn parking spot and you shouldn't be using it without a permit anyway. Good day. I tried walking away. EM, you selfish brat? You don't know what tired is. I'm going to report you to store security. I'll get them to tow your car. Me, lady, call security if you want. I'm allowed to park there. I didn't choose to become disabled, but you chose to have kids. It's not my fault you're tired and run down and can't be bothered to walk the extra 200 feet to the door. It's not my fault you chose to let some guy jizz inside you. You deal with your life, I'll deal with mine. I hobbled off to try finish my shopping, ignoring her parting comments. That fight gave me just enough adrenaline to get through my trip without falling apart. I had an assistant help load my vehicle, which was undisturbed where I'd parked it. I was still pissed when I got home, but it was nothing a long soak in the tub couldn't fix. I still hope she gets ticked for parking in the handicapped spots, but as long as I never see her again, I'll be happy.